Um, like I said yesterday, and I have to repeat it um, because there's some new faces. Um, uh, I'm not an expert, just to be honest and clear and to put it as bluntly as possible. Um, I'm not an expert at all concerning the topic of this uh, uh, symposium, but nevertheless, I feel uh, grateful um, participating for being invited by Wenzel and uh, the Goethe Institute uh, uh, because um, uh, I think uh, as a philosopher in a way, even if I'm not an expert, uh, I have to deal with this topic, and uh, but I do it as someone who does not know much uh, about it, and um, and um, um, so, uh, like I said yesterday, um, I think uh, the question of surveillance uh, is in the very core, in the very center of the philosophical experience of the human subject um, uh, as such. So, because um, what do we call uh, uh, the human being as human subject? And as you know, just to make this kind of side remark, the philosophy of the 20th century established a kind of fundamental element elementary mistrust um, concerning the possibility of the self-addressing of the human being as subject, because um, with psychoanalysis, with Freud, of course, with uh, other uh, theoretical events, let's say, of the 19th uh, century, uh, the history of ideas of 19th century, um, uh, we, um, we were forced to, uh, to accept uh, that the human subject is first of, uh, first of all an object, an object of circumstances, an object maybe of uh, this kind of um, instance uh, uh, um, that uh, is in psychoanalysis, for example, is called uh, uh, the unconscious or unconsciousness. Is it like this, right? And, uh, and then there's, we are, of course, like I said yesterday, uh, codified or determined or affected by uh, anonymous structures uh, um, uh, that we do not control. So we are much more like uh, controlled by uh, uh, by given structures, by given codes, by culture like it is, by social political um, um, uh, facts, um, then uh, controlling um, our world and ourselves, uh, 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 you know, uh, so we are much, much more objects within this established uh, reality field than being a subject, controlling this field and so on. And I think uh, um, uh, simplifying, um, it's possible to say that um, the philosophy of the 20th century dealt with the simple fact that uh, the human being seems to be a fact among other facts or an object among other objects. And uh, not, it's not so much a subject controlling uh, its reality and controlling itself. It is controlled. It is not only surveyed, it is controlled, it is determined, it is affected by structures that it does not control so much itself. And, uh, and of course, you know this sequence, um, of the history of um, philosophy of the 50s and 60s that is called structuralism. Uh, uh, it's so some French... Uh, 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 philosophers and, and of course, a psychoanalysis, uh, Jacques Lacan and uh, Foucault, who does not, does not wanted to make part of this, uh, of this movement, but in a way he did. And um, so, structuralism precisely pointed that out that uh, we are um, uh, spoken by language, by speaking, by using language. We are like uh, controlled by structures. Um, uh, instead of controlling uh, them uh, ourselves, and uh, so, and that was, of course, uh, also an event in the philosophy, the f um, in the French philosophy um, uh, of the 20th century, um, because um, uh, the structuralism was a precise, uh, uh, was in a kind of opposition to uh, Jean-Paul Sartre. Uh, who was born in 1905 and who died in 1980. And Jean-Paul Sartre, uh, uh, like you know, uh, like you might know, um, was pushed back to the 19th century by, for example, Michel Foucault. Michel, Michel Foucault, who was a the, uh, kind of very violent character and uh, said about Sartre, Sartre is a man of the 19th century. And uh, uh, Sartre is someone who still belongs to 
uh, an old tradition that is a 19th century philosophy. And what does it mean? It simply means Sartre still believes in freedom. Sartre still believes in responsibility. And as you know, a, a kind of freedom, a minimum of freedom, is the very condition of responsibility. If there's no freedom at all, there's no responsibility. So we are not speaking about the responsibility of animals, for example, because we, uh, and of co um, because we, we do not think that animals are free, free in the sense of that there's a freedom of choice, a freedom of decision. Um, so, and if this freedom does not exist, um, there is no uh, responsibility at all. So Sartre, in a way, was still this kind of idealistic philosopher that seemed to believe in freedom, in responsibility. That means in the possibility to define the human being as a subject uh, instead of an object of circumstances, an object of the, uh, the symbolic order, uh, like Lacan put it, or uh, the, um, uh, the social, political, and the economical, uh, economical um, 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 how do you say, structures. And um, I think this is a, a, a crucial, um, uh, uh, how do you say, um, moment in the philosophy of the 20th century um, that uh, um, Sartre is, or the philosophy of Sartre, and that means freedom and responsibility are not long an option for many of these uh, philosophers that are um, <coughs> called um, structuralist uh, or philosophers that are, uh, um, how to say, familiar to uh, this um, this movement that is called structuralism and even neo-structuralism, post-structuralism, and so on. And uh, yesterday I spoke about, I used the term of freedom and I said, uh, I, I was quoting uh, uh, Nietzsche who, uh, 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 who used uh, this, um, this formula of um, the, the growing desert. The desert is growing and I mentioned, of course, this uh, well-known formula of the death of God uh, that everybody, everybody knows, even if you uh, uh, haven't read Nietzsche, um, everyone knows, it's like with the cogito ergo sum concerning Descartes, you know that um, Nietzsche is the guy who pointed out, and of course he's not the only one, God is dead. What does it mean, God is dead? Yesterday I said, God is dead, that might mean that nobody cares about me, nobody is observing me, nobody uh, uh, is interested in me. So uh, that would be a kind of excessive or hyperbolic freedom we are thrown in uh, uh, that uh, Sartre spoke about. And this is why I uh, quoted Sartre yesterday and said, okay, and this is a very famous quote, of course, um, that uh, nous sommes condamnés à être libre, uh, like he says in French, uh, we are condemned to be free. And what does it mean? Condemned to be free might mean in the context of our symposium, we are condemned to be uh, not interesting at all for nobody, even not for NSA. And so we are observed and we are, they are the secret agencies, they are collecting informations. But I think the real desert uh, um, we are not ready to accept is that um, even if they collect so many information and uh, um, and even if um, these services uh, might work quite well, um, there's no mastermind behind. Uh, so at least this is my propos pr proposition. The uh, classical term for the mastermind, of course, in our Christian uh, theological, ontotheological, cultural Western tradition is God. So, and as long as God exists, there's someone who cares about me, at least for punishing me after death. But uh, the problem here is um, uh, that the formula that, uh, of, um, concerning the death of God, the Nietzschean formula, might be, uh, uh, let's say, uh, a radicalized interpretation of this formula. Uh, might be um, uh, this kind of growing desert. So God is dead means n uh, there's nothing but the indifference of the cosmos. There's nothing but um, ontological indifferent, in, uh, in indifference, indifference, and uh, nobody cares. And I think um, not to deal with uh, this insight um, uh, means uh, to invent, like I said yesterday, substitutions. Uh, for uh, the dead God, and NSA might be a kind of substitution. And uh, if it is not NSA, it's, 
the phantasm of romantic love uh, yesterday. I just mentioned it, and this is all I can do here. And sorry, I'm really sorry for my rather basic English. And um, but I'm not. I'm, I do not have the time to develop here and um, to uh, to uh, express myself in in arguments. I just um, try to mention some things and to, to make some remarks how I how my approach is to the topic of this uh, conference, a philosophical approach uh, in relation to the philosophical situation of um, the um, uh, to the situation of philosophy nowadays so in 2015 but also the whole um, so 100 years in philosophy is not so much and uh, so uh, Nietzsche is a contemporary I even would say Aristotle is a contemporary there's a very specific temporality in philosophy that uh, you cannot say okay we are done with Hegel we are done even with Sartre uh, okay Sartre is a I'm Switching between, I'm living in Berlin, but I'm switching between Paris and Berlin, and um, and um, I'm half French, by the way, and so uh, uh, and sometimes my 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 friends, my philosopher friends in Paris, they tell me, oh, yeah, but Sartre, that's done, it's over, and like Foucault, they would say, it's 19th century, or and then uh, you find yourself in the uh, position of um, being forced to decide or Sartre or, Ranci or uh, Ranciere, for example, even if Ranciere is not so far away, or, or Sartre or Foucault, for example, that's for sure, or Sartre or Foucault. I, 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 this is something I do not uh, agree with, I do not accept. I think uh, uh, in philosophy it's not or this one or this one, but reading a philosopher means like trying to understand, okay, what can I learn by this position? That does not mean to uh, accept everything that this philosopher says, that would be impossible. So I cannot read uh, Heidegger, who was a Nazi and so on, and, uh, and uh, a very problematic, let's say, political reactionary guy. And, uh, but nevertheless, uh, there's something in his thinking that uh, is still very important, I would say. The same with Adorno, the same, okay, he was less reactionary, but also a very conservative guy in many uh, points. So, um, and uh, the same, okay, with Sartre, people say, okay, uh, Sartre um, uh, made so many, like, political mistakes concerning uh, his uh, relation to um, communism, of Foucault uh, concerning <coughs> uh, the Iran and um, and uh, Ayatollah Khomeini and so on, or nowadays Alain Badiou, who's uh, a contemporary philosopher still alive in Paris and he, <laughs> who is still a Maoist. And I think this is very interesting. I'm not cynical here, but I think you will not find someone who is totally free of any contamination by ideology. And this is what I tried yesterday to say yesterday. And I'm not cynical. I try to be as less cynical as possible. And I do not believe in innocence, not in thinking, not in life, not in in love, so we are contaminated by um, ideology, and it's not so easy to make a clear distinction between a kind of, let's say, authentic idea and uh, ideology, and so on. And this is what I try um, to express here: um, being controlled by history, being affected by cultural facts, by the by the history of ideas. Um, by the um, uh, simply means, yeah, already being bounded, being in a way fi founding ourselves in a situation without necessarily being surveyed, founding ourselves already like dominated by the existing reality, by the what I would like to call the universe of facts, and what I. Um, try to point out in my books and in my writings and, and lectures is um, that uh, there's no need to stop here just with this diagnosis and to say something, to claim something like uh, we are nothing but the product of established reality order. We are, we, and we are excessively, and we do not control the world, we do not control ourselves within the world. And so yesterday we started, and also today, uh, the the... The, the topic and the very political idea of resistance uh, pointed, how do you say, uh, came up. And, uh, and I think this is a very beautiful term and who, who, want, who does not want to be resistant and who does not want to be critical and so on. I mentioned it yesterday already and I think I too, I want to be as resistant as possible. But uh, uh, at the same time, I think it's important um, to uh, uh, not to forget that um, it's not for sure at all that we are 
and uh, and the very idea of resistance and the very idea of criticality is already like uh, how do you say um, appropriated by so-called neoliberalism, capitalism, and so on. And this neoliberalism, this uh, the common enemy of all of us who uh, uh, still insist on a kind of emancipatory leftist project, uh, is in the very core of. Uh, the very project of resistance itself. There's a philosopher, I'm never quoting <laughs> nearly a German philosopher that I don't know if you know him from Frankfurt Goethe University, uh, Martin Seel. Um, um, but I, I like uh, one uh, specific sentence he once wrote, and it's um, about, um, uh, also I say it in German because it's a uh, Goethe Institute, and then you help me to translate. Uh, it's um, nur im Strom kann man gegen ihn schwimmen. Uh, only within the stream you can. Um, how do you say, uh, against swim against things, uh, swim against the stream. And this is a situation, uh, I think, uh, this is a, uh, a nice, small, uh, short aphorism. So there's no simple beyond, okay? I'm not the first one claiming this, of course. Anyhow, that, that's, I'm repeating myself in relation to yesterday. Uh, this was not my idea to come here and to tell you something new, just to remember you what you already know. and. Um, and to, to just to give you some, uh, to present you some remarks concerning um, uh, the the aporias of um, of critical theory, but also critical activism, political activism, and so on. And uh, so how being against. So uh, Tony Negri, m some of you I'm sure remember uh, the book Empire uh, that was published in 2000, uh, kind of dreamy political uh, vision and book um, from Tony Negri and Michael Hart. And I like the book, um, it's very much criticized uh, by many of my friends, but I think uh, I still like something, I, I, simp I like the dreamy part of the book also. But at the same time, of course, we have to be critical concerning this idea being against. Bartleby, of course, is the figure, of course, uh, of uh, Herman Melville, uh, um, is a kind of reference in this book, like for Deleuze and Agamben and other people and in the actual political, in the actual, in the contemporary political scene. So how to be against, uh, how to be against the world like it is without fleeing the world like it is. And here I would like just to mention uh, or to remember for some of you, um, that uh, already read it, uh, there's uh, this old book uh, now uh, uh, from Gilles Deleuze and Félix Quattari, uh, Qu'est-ce que la philosophie, what is philosophy, published in 1990, uh, 91 or 90, and um, there there's a category, they invented the category, Deleuze uh, specifically in particular invented this category of the survol, the overflying, and I think this is, uh, see he's speaking, or they are speaking about uh, art about philosophy about science and um, but um, what art philosophy and science might share is le, le survol that means to overfly reality overflying is not does not mean to escape it's not escapism it's not this what all we philosophers are accused from the very beginning uh, that we are not ready for reality. We do not stand reality, the hard facts and so on. And I think uh, that's not well uh, thought because reality is nothing but reality, facts are nothing but facts. These are just narratives and people that tell you come down to the hard ground of the facts are people that uh, do not think uh, very clear because uh, this I do not believe in this um, hard ground of facts and this is simple, simply a narrative that does not mean that facts does not exist. It simply means that facts are nothing but facts and philosophy is a very interrogation of the, of the consistency or the so-called consistency or if you want the inconsistency of the universe of established facts that means of our world, the reality field uh, and reality precisely is another concept that has a precise function. Someone referring on reality or so-called reality is someone who tries in a way quite often by telling you come down Stay real. Stay real means uh, stay here in this kind of on this uh, on this uh, supposed consistent uh, uh, ground that uh, I call reality, our world, and stop thinking. Simply, to court, stop thinking. Uh, do not even try. And uh, philosophy for me, and here I'm still uh, speaking about. The, uh, I'm still. Um, 
thinking about the concept of resistance, to resist means in a way, yes, to intensify your contact to the established reality order by establishing a, a, minim, a minimal distance to it. And this is how I understand Deleuze and Guattari, and uh, for this there are still uh, contemporary actual uh, philosophers for me, important uh, sources for actual philosophical and political discourse, because it's not like uh, es escapism, like fleeing reality, it's not like accepting being totally bounded by the uh, by established by the established reality order simply means yeah to uh, take the risk of a certain distance to take a certain distance and but this distance this overflying this distance by overflying the established reality fields means at the same time to intensify your contact to this field um, by overflying it and um, okay and so overflying means to to observe or to survey maybe, that simply means, uh, and this is uh, my last remark, and um, here I come back to, to some remarks that I made yesterday, very short, I'm, I'm sure, that's it's not satisfying what I'm saying, um, but uh, uh, these are just remarks, And um, but uh, yesterday I said it already, um, that um, there's um, <clears throat> this idea um, uh, of um, surveillance and observation uh, or the topic of surveillance and observation is in the very center of the critical project that is associated with what we call enlightenment or Aufklärung in German um, or uh, Les Lumières in French. And yesterday I mentioned also the concept of evidence and transparency. We have to speak about uh, the, the uh, dictatorship of transparency nowadays. We have to speak about the the this uh, very idea of evidence um, uh, in in the in the center of the philosophical the critical experience the, uh, or self experience of the philosophical subject in Kant and in uh, maybe from the very beginning it's always about light bringing light and to make things uh, uh, clear to uh, to bring light into darkness and so on and here I'm not for obscurantism I'm uh, insisting that philosophy is uh, uh, a practice that is in, in a way anti obscurantist practice, but at the same time we have to deal with this complicated operatic di dialectics between um, opacity and transparency. So the question is not I'm for this or for this, and this is what we of course learned by uh, all important philosophers. Heidegger, like Adorno and Horkheimer, with the dialectics of enlightenment. Uh, the question is not uh, uh, because there's a dictatorship of light, an imperialism of light, like Jacques Derrida once put it, and with him Maurice Blanchot, or both together, there's an imperialism of evidence, an imperialism of light uh, on the one hand, and there's imperialism of, let's say, darkness, that's called obscurantism, vulgar mysticism, uh, esoterics, uh, not, not, not acceptable esoterics, but so um, the question was never uh, or light or darkness. The question is how to balance uh, these um, um, these um, re registers. And the last remark, um, of, um, and this is just uh, also another proposal: um, how defining this operatic or operatic um, relation between these registers in Heidegger, of course, is lete and alete. Yeah, it's openness on the one hand and 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 uh, closure on the other hand. These kind of ontological, quasi ontological uh, registers. And my proposal would be. Um, to think about um, the uncertainty relation, of course, in quantum physics, and uh, and like you know, uh, there's this uh, idea in Heisenberg in 27 um, that it's not possible for the same moment to to define for the same moment with the same exactitude, yeah, uh, pre precision uh, um, to localize and um, um, uh, an electron and um, to define its, uh, how do you say, uh, its spin, I think. And uh, so to translate this uh, into uh, the uh, operatic uh, dialectics between um, uh, light and darkness or openness and closure, it would simply mean, oh, we are f in, we are not possible for the same moment. It's, it's, it, looks like that, it looks like that for the very same moment, or we are too much in the affirmation, 
of um, the dark and inconsistent sides of the so-called reality field, or we, uh, we are on the opposite side and in a kind of blind affirmation of so-called evidences, evid evidences and certainties by ignoring uh, the very ontological inconsistency of uh, these certainties and evidences uh, uh, itself. Okay, my English was very poor. Sorry. Sorry. Thank <laughs> you.